Hey there, Swarmers. We hope you're doing well. Today, we're exploring the most used and most important engineering material in the world, steel. It's necessary for laboratories, all modes of transportation, roads, bridges, housing, shipping, and musical instruments. It's also used in abundance in your household, like for saucepans, bridges, and furniture, and in hospitals in surgical instruments. It seems even more unavoidable than plastics, but that's not a bad thing. Steel is infinitely recyclable with no downgrading in quality. So once manufactured, its life is potentially limitless. Even scrap from the smelting is fed back into the system for use. Due to being magnetic, it's extremely easy to separate from other recycling and trash. And recycling steel uses 64% less energy, 73% less greenhouse gases, and 90% less iron ore than when processing virgin steel. There is more demand than supply for recycled steel, which maintains the value of this commodity, something which can't be said for most other recycled materials. And the rates for steel recycling are pleasingly high. Steel is a necessity in our lives economically as well as functionally. The industry employs millions of people worldwide, has an annual turnover of $2.5 trillion and produces over 1.3 billion tonnes of the stuff every year. Thanks to developments in material science, we need less to create the same products than ever before. If the Eiffel Tower were built today, it would require 75% less steel. While we're looking for alternatives to cement and plastic, due not only to the raw ingredients and carbon footprint of production, but largely to the end of life difficulties with these materials, we don't need to find a replacement for steel. But what we do need to address is the manufacturing process because as it stands, outside of power generation, the iron and steel sector is the largest industrial producer of greenhouse gases. A whopping seven to nine percent of global direct fossil fuel emissions are from this industry. That's more than the total emissions from India. And that statistic's particularly relevant because India is currently the world's second largest steel manufacturer and plans to be the world leader by 2050. There are two methods of steel production, blast furnace or electric arc furnace. Usually when virgin steel is being produced, the blast furnace method is used and it can utilize a maximum of 30% recycled steel, where the electric arc furnace method can utilize 100% recycled material. The move from blast furnace to electric arc furnace has already resulted in a 60% decrease in energy requirement. But this alone won't be enough to decarbonise the industry adequately. The International Energy Agency calculate that the industry need to drop emissions by at least 50% by 2050 if we're to meet global energy and climate goals. The blast furnace technique requires large quantities of coking coal, and this is used for both the heating energy to temperatures above 1000 degrees Celsius, as well as playing a part in the chemical reaction of production. And when we say large quantities of coal are needed, we really mean it. In Germany, the steel sector uses one third of their total coal demand. Typically, it takes 1.6 tonnes of iron ore and about 450 kilograms of coke to produce one tonne of the raw iron which comes out of a blast furnace. Because of the coking coal used, the byproduct of this chemical reaction is CO2. However, this is where Japanese steel manufacturer Kobe Steel are focusing to make a positive impact. They've been adding hot briquetted iron, that is iron ore with the oxygen removed, so they need less coking coal. They suggest that their technique will reduce GHG emissions by 20%. Another option for reducing steel production's environmental impact is utilising green hydrogen as the reductant instead of coking coal. This means the only byproduct is water, no CO2 at all. An exciting collaboration on this front is in Sweden between an investor group, a sustainable innovations accelerator and a trucking company. It's called H2 Green Steel. They expect to go into production by 2024 and by 2030 will be making 5 million tonnes of high quality zero emission steel every year. They are focused on providing steel to the transport industry. Looking at car manufacture specifically, Mercedes-Benz claim that one sedan is about 50% steel, which makes up 30% of the vehicle's production greenhouse gas emissions. So this move has incredibly powerful potential. The key to making it a reality will be the availability of cost-competitive green hydrogen. 
Until that happens, there will likely be an increase in the cost of the steel. Customers will need to acknowledge the reason for this and swallow the temporary bitter pill. Another innovation is from Bill Gates backed startup Boston Metal. They are separating the oxygen from the iron ore using electricity, creating a byproduct of oxygen. This is through a process called molten oxide electrolysis. They've had success in the labs at MIT and now need to scale and commercialize. The benefit of this over the use of green hydrogen is that it can produce high quality steel faster with fewer steps. But a major similarity with the green hydrogen is that this tech won't come cheap. So the need for taxpayer support is inevitable. Investment and innovation are playing an integral role in decarbonizing this necessary industry but both will need to be fast-tracked if we're to succeed in the time that we have. Do you work in the industry? Are you working to develop lower carbon emission steel? We'd love to hear from you. Oh, and anyone else, of course. Thanks again for joining us, Swarmers. It's always a pleasure. Make sure that you've subscribed and hit the notification button so you always know when we've dropped a video. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay sustainable. Mm -hmm.